Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, who is decorated for Christmas. Um, in this video, I want to talk about airplane mode. So we all think that we know what airplane mode is for, but it turns out that we're all wrong. So obviously we all know what airplane mode is. You have like say a smartphone and you put airplane mode on and all the radios are turned off. Uh, it doesn't uh, transmit or receive Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, there's no cell phone, cellular network connection. Um, sometimes even the GPS, which only receives signals from satellites, sometimes even GPS is turned off on some smartphones, although that's not actually technically necessary. So that's what airplane mode is. We all know what it is. Uh, but most people say that the reason for airplane mode is to prevent your gizmo, like say your smartphone, from transmitting and interfering with the avionics, i.e. the electronics and communication systems of the aircraft that you may be on. It turns out that that's actually wrong. Um, now it may get, actually get a little bit confusing because it's kind of silly because, as you know, nowadays on most major airlines they have uh, free, um, usually free messaging, like you can send text messages and that sort of thing. That's free, but usually you have to pay for Wi-Fi. So actually, if you pay for Wi-Fi, you have Wi-Fi access on the airplane, and yet your phone has an airplane mode to prevent it from transmitting. Now, of course, you can say, well, yeah, but you can't use it during takeoff and landing. And that's kind of a key point. But the idea here is that it doesn't really make much sense to have airplane mode if you can then turn your Wi-Fi on later in the flight. So what's that all about? Um, also, I should note that airplane mode doesn't necessarily mean that the phone is never transmitting because most phones, uh, if you put it in airplane mode, you can turn on either the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth when it's still in airplane mode which is obviously useful if you have uh, a flight where they have in-flight Wi-Fi. You need it in airplane mode, but you don't need it to totally stop Wi-Fi. Uh, all of these are clues to the real purpose of airplane mode, which I shall now dive into based on a wonderful document from the Federal Communications Commission. If you look this up, uh, people will say, oh, the FAA says this, blah, blah, blah. Actually, it's the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, that decided this whole airplane mode thing was needed, and there is a very specific reason why. So this document that I'm looking at here is from the FCC. Uh, it has a couple different numbers on it, a docket number, and uh, at the top of the page it says FCC 13-157. It was adopted on December 12th of 2013 and released the following day, December 13th, 2013. And it's basically just, um, it's basically a proposal to kind of roll back some of the earlier uh, rulings about airplane mode and about the use of um, things like, like smartphones and cell phones on airplanes. And it kind of gives us some interesting clues because they write, we propose to revise outdated rules and adopt consistent new rules governing mobile communication services aboard airborne aircraft. Now there's all kinds of stuff in here. It's kind of like blah, 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 you know, and, uh, and they note that, now of course this was many years old, so they note that uh, m more than 40 jurisdictions at the time, including Europe and Asia and Australia, they've actually authorized the use of mobile communication services on aircraft. Uh, but of course you have to do this in a way that is not going to cause harmful interference to terrestrial commercial wireless networks. That's our first clue, because later in the paper, we carry on, and we read in section two called Background, uh, part A is FCC regulations limiting airborne mobile use. And they note that um, this was back in the old days. So they note that blah, 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 rules governing airborne use of mobile devices vary significantly. They talk about the 800 megahertz cellular band. Well, that's like really, really old. As I said, this is a very old paper. But then they note there are no such restrictions on airborne use of the AWS, PCS, WCS, 700 megahertz, or AWS-4 bands. Now, you may recognize such fra phrases as uh, AWS and especially PCS, because that's like the 1.8, 1.9, 2 gigahertz. Um, 
wireless service provider, cell, cell phone service, which it's kind of been superseded now, I think, by, by newer services. But the point they're making here is that this 800 megahertz cellular band, which was very old, that one was regulated, but all the newer ones were not regulated. So obviously they have to update this. Uh, and then they note, this is the key part, part 22 of the commission's rules prohibits the airborne use of 800 megahertz cellular telephones, including the use of such phones on commercial and private aircraft. This prohibition was adopted in 1991 to guard against the threat of harmful interference from airborne use of cellular phones to terrestrial cellular networks. The commission's prohibition was not to ensure interference-free operation of avionics equipment. When the prohibition was adopted, the commission noted that a cellular telephone used on board an aircraft would have greater range than a land-based handset, and its signal would be received by multiple terrestrial cell sites in a given market, causing harmful interference. Moreover, the commission found that because a cellular telephone can transmit on all assigned frequencies, a single handset could interfere with cellular systems in multiple cellular market areas simultaneously. Thus, the commission concluded way back when, 1991, that the need for non-interference in all cellular transmissions outweighs the benefits that would be realized by allowing the public to use cellular service in airborne craft. So what the heck does that all mean? Basically, way back in 1991, when most cell phone providers were using like this 800 megahertz band, and, and back in 1991, everyone wasn't running around with even a cell phone, much less a smartphone, the FCC, not the FAA, not the airplane group, but the, the Federal Communications Commission got together and they said, hey, look, we can't have this. And the reason is um, mostly it's about something called handoff. So when you have a, a phone or a smartphone, you're connected to a cell tower. Now, if you start moving, your phone actually will connect. First, it's connected to this tower, but as you're moving this way, it connects to the next tower. And there's a time when your phone can actually be connected to multiple towers at once and they're kind of negotiating and the phone is detecting okay which which tower do i have a stronger signal from and and the towers are kind of it's there it's basically working out uh at sort of a network level okay who who should this who should your phone which tower should your phone be connected to so as you move along first you're connected to this tower as you move along then suddenly you're closer to this tower so your phone connects to this one and drops its connection to that one and it's constantly checking to see okay which tower should i connect to now you can imagine if you're on an airplane that's traveling say faster than 200 miles an hour which somewhere in here it's mentioned that's sort of the key speed if you go faster than 200 miles an hour Imagine how quickly that handoff would be occurring. You'd be, you'd be connected to this tower, then this tower, and this tower, and this tower, and of course that can overload the cell phone system. At least it could back in 1991. Furthermore, if you're in an airplane, you've got towers down here, and your airplane is up here. Now your signal from your phone that you're using on the airplane is actually transmitting signals down to the ground. And of course it has, it's not really the proper angle, but of course it would have kind of line of sight and um, sort of a more clear transmission path to all these towers in the ground. Which means not only is your plane flying really fast and it's trying to hand your phone off from this tower to this tower to this tower, but your signals are actually flooding a very large geographical area and you could even be connected to multiple carriers and multiple towers and basically that would overload the system. At least it would back in 1991. That's the idea. So that's why they banned the use of cell phones on airplanes. It wasn't to interfere with the avionics of the plane. Uh, it was to prevent problems with the cell phone networks on the ground. Now, of course, today we have much newer systems and they're much higher capacity. We have crazy data and, of course, things have changed. And um, as I said, this paper is from about five years ago. And nowadays, uh, yeah, we've, we even have like Wi-Fi and stuff on airplanes and um, you can even make uh, phone calls sometimes, you can do text messages. It depends on the airline, it depends on the services they provide. So, um, okay, well, how does that actually work? Because, you know, obviously, as I said before, uh, you can have your phone in airplane mode, but you can still enable the Wi-Fi. Well, that makes sense because they offer in-flight Wi-Fi. And the way that they do this is, uh, the airplane actually has uh, a couple, and one or two antennas on the airplane itself that connect wirelessly to a satellite, actually to multiple satellites as the plane travels. 
that's actually the internet connection. It's kind of like satellite internet for an airplane. If you've ever had satellite internet, you know you have a parabolic dish that's wired up to your house, to your that's your internet, and it shoots the rays way the heck up to a satellite. The satellite bounces it back down to a base station on the ground, and you can get very high download speeds even though the latency is very high because it takes a very long time for the signals to go way up to the satellite and way back down to Earth. So that's what they do on airplanes is most of the time. Uh, there are some airplane to ground links, but uh, nowadays there's a service called, uh, I think it's called GoGo, and it's basically internet by satellite. So the airplane itself has, has a, an internet connection essentially via satellites. And then within the cabin, they have very low power Wi-Fi. And this is one of, one of the key points is if you have multiple antennas inside the cabin, you can have their transmit power set very, very, very low. And then, uh, as I mentioned in that video about reducing your Wi-Fi transmit power, anyway, they set the transmit power inside the cabin the transmit power of the Wi-Fi very, very low, and of course you're all just sitting there in your seats and you have your Wi-Fi gizmo and your device is also transmitting at a very low power because it doesn't need to transmit at a very high power and it's only Wi-Fi. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's how that works. Now, obviously if your phone is in airplane mode, it's not connecting to the cellular networks. Um, that's why we kind of still need airplane mode because you still don't really want uh, a cell phone a smartphone on a plane connecting even to modern cellular networks because you may have similar problems. So they say, yes, put your phone in airplane mode. That kills your cellular connection. It eliminates any problems of connecting to stations on the ground. And then they say, oh, but if you want messaging or Wi-Fi or something, you can re-enable Wi-Fi now, sometimes Bluetooth, and then you can connect via the onboard Wi-Fi on the plane, which connects via satellite back down to Earth to the actual Internet but they still actually have rules in place where you, when the plane is taking off and landing, you're still supposed to stow all your electronic devices, put your seat back and tray tables in the upright position and all that kind of stuff. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Um, it's probably fairly unlikely that uh, even a bunch of cell phones would cause interference with the avionics. It's possible, but it's probably unlikely but generally speaking, it's kind of a bad idea if your plane is at rest and it starts to accelerate and go really fast and take off. Everyone's phones on the plane are connected and they're, they're, you know, they're trying to connect to cell towers and maintain their connection. Now, obviously, there are probably many people on your average flight who are told to turn their phone off or put it in airplane mode and they forget. And to my knowledge, no planes have crashed because someone didn't put their phone in airplane mode. But the point there is that generally during takeoff and landing, you do want to turn all electronic things off. You do want to put airplane mode on. Um, you do want to put your seat back in the upright position, your tray table, put your seat belt on, because takeoff and landing are actually the probably most difficult and most dangerous parts of any flight. Um, you have to worry about other airplanes. You have to, they basically lock the whole airplane down because it's like a hairy part, taking off, landing. When it's flying up in the air, that's like almost easy compared to taking off and landing. So, you know, even even the the air st st host, I'm not even sure which, the people who work on the airplane and serve you drinks and food, I'm not sure even what the politically correct term is these days, those, those people, <laughs> um, they actually have to sit down in their seats and strap themselves in. And so, um, so that's why we still have that kind of thing. It's it's not really like it's going to destroy the cell phone network, but it's just kind of good practice, like better safe than sorry. And once you're actually in the air, um, these rules for like when you can use Wi-Fi and this and that, there are specific rules. You have to be like above 10,000 feet. If you're going faster than 200 miles an hour, then you have to do this. And you have to have a, they call it a Pico cell where there's this uh, essentially, like I explained, the, the Wi-Fi on board in the cabin of the aircraft, that's actually connected to the satellite connection, and that's sort of the approved way of doing things. So obviously, simply having Wi-Fi enabled on board an airplane is not going to cause the airplane to crash. And the key, the key problem here that dates all the way back to 1991 was the fact that um, in those early days, uh, cell phones could have kind of screwed up the the cell service on the ground because the plane had such a wide sort of a wide angle bird's eye view of all these towers and providers and also because the speed that the aircraft was traveling and because of this handoff problem 
And that whole thing just sort of got carried over until today. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that is actually where airplane mode came from. That's why you're not supposed to use a cell phone uh, on an airplane. And right, there you go. For more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.